usually my favorite line is my Scottish accent gives it away. <laughs> uh, I am actually originally from Germany and just a quick uh, introductory story. Uh, I left Germany in 1989, um, moved to Canada, uh, worked for another German company for a few years. And then in 1999, long time ago, uh, I was um, hired by Miele and uh, been with the company for 22 years, uh, a Canadian citizen, a proud green card holder, <laughs> and now since five years um, working here for Miele in the U.S. Station, our head office is in Princeton, New Jersey, and uh, I actually live in Fort Lauderdale, so I'm a lucky guy. So uh, hearing more about your story, um, you moved from Germany to Canada. Was that for business reasons? Yeah, I got a I got a job with another German company called Biserba. Uh, Biserba is the leading uh, scale company in the world. So, you know, you would go to Whole Foods and you would uh, order a pound of I don't know um, black forest ham or, or turkey, and then they would slice it on a Biserba slicer and then afterwards take it and put it on a Biserba scale. So, family-owned company, very similar to me. Really interesting. Uh, story and uh, started my career with them. And then, hmm. like I said, in 1999, um, Miele knocked on my door. And it's quite interesting because um, in 1999, in Canada, uh, nobody knew our brand. And, and the, the, the interesting story I always tell people, um, we kind of imported European appliances to North America. Mm -hmm. and, and, and my favorite story is when our engineers came over and looked at everything, we went to the dealers and, and some households and, and they looked at the ovens. And, you know, I'm actually here in our, in our showroom in Miami in Coral Gables. We have 10 of these beautiful, we call them experience centers. And I'm, I'm standing here in our live kitchen so I can relate to the appliances while <laughs> we're <perfect>. talking. <laughs> so anyway, so the story is, uh, at the time in, in Europe, uh, the appliances are relatively small. Uh, most ovens are, the standard size is 24 inch. So mm. we tried to bring in these relatively small ovens and then our engineer said, why can't you sell them? Said, because they're too small. No, they're not too small. They're convection, <laughs> great technology. And then we had to explain to them is that there's something in North America which is called Thanksgiving. And there's something <laughs> called a turkey dinner. And, and those turkeys are big because you know, they're big family get together, 20, 30, 40 people. And by the way, most homes, they have not one oven, they have two. Yeah. And they are 30 inch wide mm. because they have to cook uh, during Thanksgiving. And for them, it was kind of, uh, why would you do that? And then fast forward, it took us, I don't know, about six, seven years to convince them that, you know, we need this in order to become a, a, a recognizable competitive brand in, in North America and in Canada and the US. And so we developed actually a, a cooking line for North America. And that was actually the breakthrough of our company. But the interesting story is, you know, you see the, the cooking habits, the design habits in Europe versus North America, very different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now we have a 30 inch oven. Now we have a double oven. Now we have everything for North American households. But the story is kind of, you know, we had to work with our engineers um, to develop that. And we are very happy now that we have a full lineup. And these discussions, by the way, are ongoing. We're always looking for the latest in technology design, but then we also have to look at different markets. You know, China is different than North America. Europe is different, mm. you know, and we are a global company. Um, we are actually the, the largest independently owned appliance company in the world. We have 46 subsidiaries, so we are selling all over the world. But again, our, our products are designed, manufactured, uh, and developed uh, for the market needs. So that's kind of how I, you know, that's a little bit of a segue to, you know, my first interesting uh, uh, experience with Miele in Canada. And I, I have many more stories like that, but that was actually always the, the most interesting one, especially when it comes to Thanksgiving. <laughs> right. So Miele is obviously a German company founded there, right? So was it the 1990s was the around the time when it was first being introduced in a serious way in North America? Is that? Yeah, I mean, the company itself is actually 122 years old. And, and um, <laughs> I mentioned before, 
family own, um, there is actually a Mr. Miele. Um, mm-hmm. We are now operating in the fourth generation. There are two families, uh, two founding families, the Miele family and the Zinkan family. And um, they're still in, uh, in the management of this company. So as a matter of fact, this morning I was on a, on a team's call and Dr. Reinhard Zinkan, so the one um, board member from the Zinkan family side, and then Dr. Markus Miele were both on the call. So they're still, you know, working every day, actively involved, fourth generation. Such as, you know, kind of the heritage, um, the product we design and produce, but also it's a, it's a very interesting family story. Mm. Um, exciting company to work for, um, longevity, and, and still the owners are very hands-on, which is pretty unusual. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, you know, the size of our company uh, is a pretty big company. We employ about 21,000 people worldwide. So this is a big company, and um, the owners are still uh, involved every day, and we have access to them, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, you know, doing a bit of research leading up to this, uh, on the Mila website, there's a kind of a history section. Oh, yeah, this is great. And actually, I would encourage any of our listeners to go check it out because it's it's really fascinating. Now, I'll be honest, I think on the surface, some people might be like, well, the history of an appliance company, how interesting <laughs> can that be? It's pretty interesting. Like, the, I think Mila was responsible for the first, if I might be misquoting here, the first powered washing machine. I mean, the company is really old, as you mentioned, and they came up with a number of innovations. And from a designer's perspective, at the very least, it's fascinating to go back and look at what these machines look like <laughs> 120 years ago and how things slowly evolved to, to where they are. It's, 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 it's very, very interesting. And, and obviously, I'm not going back 100 years, personally, <laughs> but I'm going back 22 years, and yeah. you know, I can... I can tell your listeners um, from my own uh, experience that, you know, when I look back uh, to the days when I started with this company and I look at the product and I look at what we have today, it's mind boggling. You know how, you know, the, the, the concept is still the same. I mean, we're, we're, we're producing washing machines who wash clothes, um, ovens who, you know, cook meals. But in, in terms of the involvement, uh, in terms of technology and and, and design uh, and innovation is unbelievable. And, you know, I thought 22 years ago, you know, that's the most advanced washing machine in the world. And I look back and say, oh my God, look what we are doing today. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and from a, from a design and innovation perspective, you know, um, I thought, you know, 15 years ago, our built-in appliances we sold were slick and beautiful design. And then I look <laughs> at what, we are, what we're doing today, it's just amazing. Um, just in, in my lifetime with Mila, which is uh, arguably a long time, uh, a lot of things have, uh, have changed. And, and I'm, I'm sure, you know, uh, if you are an architect and a designer, you're looking not just appliances, because, you know, we are kind of a lifestyle brand uh, as well. And um, we have to integrate our appliances in, 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 in modern kitchens, for example, or contemporary kitchens. And, you know, it's not just that we are designing appliances um, to make sure that they wash properly or they cook properly, they also have to fit in the latest design. And then technology, uh, the connected home, all of these things, that's that's today um, uh, what people are looking for. Yeah. <laughs> that's for sure true. And I know when we spec appliances, it's very important how it integrates into the design <laughs> of the kitchen. <laughs> I don't want any ugly yeah. appliances in my designs. <laughs> And, and then I think also, you know, uh, on the topic of integration, um, you know, one of the most important space in the house today is the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a very important, you know, social uh, part of, uh, of a family is, is the kitchen. So, you know, design, uh, sustainability, longevity, um, ease of use, uh, connectivity. This is, it's not just you go there quickly, cook your meal, and then, you know, you go somewhere, you, you, you spend a lot of time in, in, in your kitchen, which yeah. is usually a big room, plus the, the dining room is integrated. So yeah. it's, a, it's an interesting part of, um, of, uh, of our uh, duties and, and what we do. So uh, definitely interesting. 
No, it's, it's definitely true. And it's a good observation that obviously in the recent X number of years, the kitchen space, you know, used to be very, very isolated for sure. And a lot of older homes, especially a lot, all those spaces were very isolated from one another. And more mm -hmm. recently, the kitchen is just, it's part of the great room. It's part of the dining space. It's part of the living space. It's mm -hmm. part of all these other spaces. So things are much more exposed. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's also lifestyle. Um, I mean, you know, you look around here a little bit, you know, just, um, you know, we don't have a coffee machine actually it's over there, but I can show you, but you know, we have an integrated coffee machine. We have wine coolers. It's, it's just not just the, the, the cooking you want to enjoy all the things, um, in a kitchen. And, uh, so it's, you know, a good cup of coffee. You want to enjoy your wine. Um, and you know, then different appliances, different cooking methods. So yeah, it's, it's more than just uh, a room where you quickly cook it. Yeah. It's lifestyle. So uh, let me ask also, because historically speaking, the company has manufactured and produced uh, a pretty wide variety of items. Um, even people might be surprised to hear like uh, motorized bikes, <laughs> motorized bicycles, and then, you know, later on vacuums and, and all sorts of stuff. Um, are, you is... are you going to bring the the bikes back or <laughs> any plans? <laughs> no, oh, damn it. <laughs> well, it's no it... plans at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I guess I have a couple of questions on, on that. The, the first is that um, and I don't know if you could say, but is there a certain type of uh, product line that you guys are thinking of getting into that you haven't yet? And then and by extension, um, is there is it difficult to now? get into the design and production of a new product line because m my feeling is that everything has become hyper specialized like ever like people who are producing a certain thing are experts with that certain product so therefore is it difficult to jump into something new because you don't have that history of expertise first question um i would say yes but i can't disclose anything. <laughs> okay, okay. um but i i could I could tell you, and again, you know, I, it, it, I'm not um, uh, the person to ask that question, but I don't believe that um, Nita will produce uh, bikes or cars again. Actually, we did produce uh, um, in, the, in the 1920s and 30s uh, for a few years uh, autom uh, automobiles, and we, we made cars, but we stopped that. So mm -hmm. we're not going to compete uh, with Mercedes in 10 years. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen, or Tesla <laughs> or somebody. Um, but we're always looking for opportunities in within our range of expertise. Mm -hmm. And that kind of answers your second question. Uh, we are subject ex uh, experts and um, subject matter experts. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we know how to make appliances. And in, within that field from, you know, cooking to um, floor care, what, uh, vacuum cleaners or vacuum technology, uh, refrigeration, that, that's, that's our strength. And we have a very, very wide product line, everything what you uh, need in your house. And uh, that's where we want to remain. And, you know, to branch out uh, and do something totally different and diversify your product portfolio and, and maybe go in a different industry, um, I would say it's very difficult. Uh, uh, it's very capital intensive. Um, and a lot of companies have done that, but the majority of companies who have done that, they usually buy another company. Right. And uh, we, we, we are not, uh, we are not uh, uh, an acquisition company per se, um, outside our field of expertise. Mm -hmm. So our core strength will remain the house and appliances. This is where we are strong. And we also a, a one brand company. So that's the, the Mealy company. And this is what we focus on. Right. I guess actually thinking about it with the diversity of domestic products you guys design and, and produce, that that would itself would lead to more innovation in a sense. Because assuming designers from different departments are sort of speaking with each other, there's crossover between technologies, right? 100%. And, you know, just, you know, if you look at our lineup of domestic appliances, and this is, again, one of our strengths, uh, we have one common user interface, for example. So the technologies we are using, you know, you will find them in, in, in every single product category we sell. Um, that obviously has huge advantages. So if, a, if a, a consumer decides to select our brand for their house, 
they can buy everything from us. And everything is kind of connected, has the, the same user interface. You will find the same technology in every single appliances, which makes it so much easier and convenient mm -hmm. for the consumer to, to use our appliances. And then from a design point of view, it's the same thing. So, you know, for a designer, they want to have the same look throughout the house. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's not easy to design a beautiful kitchen. So, and the integration of appliances is a big piece of that. And um, um, interesting enough, um, if, uh, if your listeners are um, planning to attend our biggest trade show, which is the Kitchen and Bar Show, will take place in Orlando, Florida next year. Um, and, and interesting also, you know, you, you, you ask, you know, what else am I doing, so to speak, besides me, I'm also a board member of the National Kitchen and Bath Association USA. Hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm encouraging you to go uh, <laughs> to that show, but also, you know, check out the NKBA. It's a great industry organization. But during the NKBA next year, we are launching a complete new line of cooking appliances, mm -hmm. a new generation, which is even more uh, design oriented. Mm -hmm. um, very cool looking. So again, innovation is very important. Uh, so we always develop our product lines uh, further, uh, launching new products on a regular basis. But next year will be big for us in the US. So I can't unveil it yet, but uh, <laughs> in the next few months, uh, lots of news to come in terms of innovation design um, uh, for media in North America. Oh, interesting. Um, talking a little bit more about the company and I guess your initial role uh, in it in Canada, right? Um, you were talking about how it was a relatively new market in a certain sense. There were adaptations that needed to be made. Um, I, I'm, I get more from a business perspective, I suppose. I'm quite curious, how did you, how did you manage to grow <laughs> the success of Mila in Canada in that period of time? Because that is a massive undertaking to come to, let's say, relatively a, a new place. And my understanding is that you were responsible for a significant amount of growth during your time as a president, as a president of Mila Canada. It was myself and my team. Uh -huh. Very important. I always mention, you know, <laughs> so twofold. Number one, I mentioned this little story about that 24 inch oven. Mm -hmm. um, um, important was that Mila corporate um, made a very conscious and important decision to invest into new products for North America. And um, so it was growth through um, developing new products for the North American market. That was a big part of, of our success in Canada and also distribution. Um, we were relatively unknown. So it was um, introducing new products, um, very relevant products, not just uh, a 30 inch uh, oven, but we also introduced ranges, um, built in built in refrigeration, um, and just, you know, expanded the product line. So it was organic growth mm -hmm. uh, from a product point of view, but the other one was distribution. And I think we did a really good job uh, building the brand. Uh, uh, we had a lot of uh, uh, cool marketing uh, initiatives. Uh, during the time, um, during my time up there, uh, our team developed some fantastic campaigns. Uh, we were very active in in sponsoring. Uh, one of the most significant one uh, was that we were uh, involved in MasterChef Canada. So oh. when the show first aired in in Canada, uh, we became the appliance sponsor, and there was a fantastic uh, relationship. And we are still involved with MasterChef Canada, which is a huge success, by the way. Still, I think we're in the in the 10th uh, season. Um, and so we were, you know, and, 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 the, and the, an interesting story about MasterChef Canada it, uh, was there were many reasons why they selected our brand, but the, the number one reason was reliability. And um, hmm. so the last thing you want on a, on a live show, it wasn't live, but on a, on a it was live kind of, um, that something breaks. Yeah. So it, it was, Obviously, the design of our appliances and the brand and all of these important things. But the most important thing was it has to work. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're in the middle of shooting a, a big segment and, you know, the contestants, they're all cooking and doing stuff. And all of a sudden, the oven doesn't work or the cooktop doesn't work. Okay, boom, cut. The whole day is lost. Right. And uh, 
without disclosing, but you can imagine, um, I, I have to say that uh, our plants are really reliable <laughs> and um, they were very, very happy and we're still supporting Master Chef. So a lot of initiatives like this, and then, you know, we built the service network and distribution, warehousing, all the stuff which comes with it. Um, but the biggest success, I guess, was that we launched new products which were very relevant for uh, Canada and the U.S. And uh, that was a big part of our success. And then I had a really good team up there. You guys must have been super excited when the Master Chef deal was done. <laughs> it, it, it was, and uh, you know, I, I went a number of times to the set, and uh, um, again, very good show, and we had a, a great relationship. Still have a great relationship uh, with the judges, and it, it was always, you know, for me, Sunday nine o'clock. Uh, um, <laughs> that was always my time when I watched TV, Master Chef, and again, it's still a great, uh, a great show, and was very instrumental for our branding in Canada. I'm, I'm curious to know, like, what were some of the other challenges, though? Because you, so, so prior to to joining Mila, were you, you were already in Canada? I was. You were. Um, but, I mean, coming to a new market like that, is is it, were you met with more friction? Like, for, for people wondering, like, who is this Mila brand? What are they doing? I mean, I guess, I guess in terms of competition, maybe also. One thing we had to do at, at the very early stage is a lot of education about the company. I mean, Miele was already mega successful in, in Europe. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have, you know, brand awareness 70, 80, 90% in some of the European markets, but we were there for 60, 70, 80 years already. Mm -hmm. So a lot of stuff was education. So by the way, what we did and still do, um, we take key business partners to Germany. Um, predominantly, we are still producing in Germany, mm. but 80% of our products are still manufactured in Germany. So we have a lot of factories there, very impressive when you take uh, clients there, dealers. But then, you know, over the years, we also took some architects and some designers. Um, uh, we also took them to uh, big relevant shows. For example, the Euro Cucina in Milan is mm -hmm. probably um, one of the top kitchen design shows in the world. So, you know, we, we took groups over there and introduced them, you know, to our brand. And really, we were able to showcase how big we are. Um, so it was a it, it, it was a process, you know, and, you know, all these bits and pieces, you know, started to uh, develop the brand mm -hmm. uh, through relationships of key stakeholders, influencers. Um, and, and also, I think, that that was also key. We we listened to what we received in terms of feedback. Mm. I mean, we work with a lot of designers and architects, and you know we get a lot of feedback and saying, hey, listen, you should look at this and you should look at that, and and we we are trying wherever it's possible uh, to take that feedback back into uh, our factories and work with our uh, uh, our engineers and say, listen, for for the U.S. and for Canada, we need this feature. Right. So. And I think that resembled then was resembled in uh, the performance design and features of our appliances. And um, that really helped us as well uh, to be very successful here. You mentioned that Mila right now is about a 20,000 person company. And I'm not sure how many people are in Germany versus the US, but like, what does, what does your day to day look like? How does, how does it, how does that, how does it operate for you to be the CEO of this of, of half or a good portion of, of a company like like Mila and effectively lead? I mean, there's a there's a big operational portion, but there's also I, I call myself a little bit the brand ambassador to Europe. Hmm. And, you know, you, you you mentioned what's my role again, operational, but also I spend a lot of time uh, with my colleagues in Europe um, from the finance people, but also uh, with our business unit, um, and there, um, I spend quality time with them to explain what we really need in this market. Mm -hmm. And maybe um, a, a, an interesting story is uh, when you know I told you about the twenty-four inch story, but you know um, there were other major product developments when we uh, introduced the ranges or our 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 master cool refrigeration. I was sitting in many meetings with the engineers back home in, in product development meetings and 
sort of helped design those products. Mm -hmm. um, and so the, the, the feedback from, from my side and my team, um, that's key. And I think that's also a, a key success factor for, for brands like ours, you know, in this case in the appliance spectrum, but the same holds true for, you know, kitchen design or other areas uh, in the house, bathrooms, fixtures and whatnot. It's all about, you know, what's important for the consumer, what's the benefit, the design, the look, the colors, you know, all of these things together. If, if you don't have a, a sense of um, what the market needs, you mm -hmm. won't be successful. Uh, and then the next thing is, I also spend a lot of time in the market. So I love going to dealer showrooms. I love going to showrooms, but also, you know, look at what's happening in the design world. Um, you know, I mentioned before that I'm a, a, a board member of the NKBA, you know, so when we have meetings, um, we, uh, we talk about design trends. And then we take this and share this information with the relevant people in, in our factory to make sure that we are always state of the art and listening to market development, not just what's happening today, but what's going to happen five, six, seven years from now, mm -hmm. uh, because it takes a long time to develop this. Um, mm -hmm. So a, a major role is, is, the, is the interface between our market, in this case, the US, and then I call it media corporate with you know the factories, the development teams, the I designers, see. the engineers. So that, that's a vital role. I see. So a number of questions from that. The first is, uh, and this is maybe a, a basic question for you, but how do you do market research for something like this? I mean, are you reaching out directly to consumers or is it, you mentioned like just staying up to date with kind of current things that are happening, but how do you get that information in the first place? Uh, it's it's multifaceted. It, you know, we're reaching out to consumers. We get a lot of feedback. Uh, not always, not everything is perfect either. Mm. So, you know, there, there's stuff, you know, where, you know, we have to tweak certain things and, and, and we get a consumer feedback, call it on a daily, weekly basis. Um, then we are in touch with key influencers, but, you know, we do a lot of market research and that some of it is done internal, but we also use a lot of consultants. You had mentioned sort of the timing of the research and versus implementing that into the products. And it, that takes years because the products have to be designed and then produced and the, the factories have to be set up and all that stuff. And so <clears throat> it seems like, um, well, I guess the first question is, so when you have a new idea for a product, a product, uh, whether it be a new thing or just a modification of existing, how much time does that take before like the public actually gets to see it? It varies. Um, again, as you can imagine, uh, let's say um, a 36 inch side by side refrigerator or a 48 inch range mm -hmm. versus a stick vacuum. <laughs> um, in terms of size, technology, sophistication, whatnot, um, obviously the, the, the product development life uh, uh, cycles are different. Um, but it, it varies from the, uh, from, uh, the product range. If we have ex existing platforms, we have called it facelift, um, every mm -hmm. two to three years at the latest. Mm -hmm. But if we're talking about a, a complete new product, which we are developing from scratch, so to speak, uh, it can take five to six years from the day we start kind of doing the first, uh, um, uh, um, the first initial discussion um to the day we we bring it to market it's so interesting it's interesting also because obviously we're both architects so we come from a sort of a different background where you know the design and the construction are they're integrated of course but they are separate things like there's a different team of people who their their, their expertise is building and constructing and doing that but when you have a product line like yours it's all integrated under one umbrella uh you know one company name and so you have the this these like conversations between the marketing the branding the design and the engineering and the pr and production like all wrapped together to to execute something in, yeah. in six years it's kind of remarkable when i think about it and on top of it, it's sometimes, you know, we're having these discussions with our business partners or, you know, like architects and designers as why can't we have it next year? Or why does it take so long? <laughs> and, um, and, it, and the answer is 
sometimes you also get um, a comment like the other guys they can do it much faster than you guys <laughs> and then then and our answer is yeah but um you know we we built our appliances to last i mean there's there's a totally different philosophy uh in our organization and and um one of the um founding principles of this company is when they when the the the, the, the Miele and the Zinkan family started this business their slogan which is by the way on more or less on on every appliance we make it's called immer besser mm -hmm. and it stands for forever better and you know you can imagine i've seen every media factory um, multiple times and if i look at our not just the, the development design process but also our manufacturing process mm -hmm. um, in order to build a quality product number one it takes a lot longer and then also just it's not just the development of the product it's also when you manufacture it and you know there are some key processes you know when it comes to lifetime testing and whatnot it just takes time and and this is not just a media brand so let's call it quality brand quality product uh the development cycles are usually longer and there's a reason for that so um for us it's not and this is maybe also an interesting um uh, comment i want to make um we we are, we are not publicly traded we are still 100% family owned and and one of our core principles is you know we don't put anything into a market until we are 100% satisfied satisfied that this appliance works and is tested and and and, and to delay a launch by a year we rather do this than go too early and and so you know from a you know, when, when, when you see sometimes, you know, that um, uh, products are being launched, you know, uh, very quickly, uh, that's not always uh, the right for the, the right way to do things. Right. And, you know, our principle is, you know, we are, we are rather a little bit slower, but very thorough uh, quality is still our number one uh, objective. <laughs> you guys were like the Apple of appliance <laughs> companies, <laughs> or the Apple is the I, te is the tech version of you guys. <laughs> I, I like that comparison, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but the the timing of things is very interesting because it has to to go with um, like being relevant in mm -hmm. the time at which the appliance comes out, right? And like you're mentioning, there is this whole research process, development before the product comes out, and it needs to come out at a time that is relevant right. and that reminds me on projects you know some of the projects we worked on in new york when you're building towers you're talking about two five-year project and you mm -hmm. start speaking appliances very early on and by the time the project is being completed the appliance is almost too old by then right, <laughs> right. so there is like how do you kind of keep up or get ahead of the trend to make sure you're always relevant to the market mm -hmm. um i think it's pretty challenging that, that's a very uh, uh, interesting um, observation and, and in relation to projects. Mm. So we are also very involved with uh, big, uh, big projects in not just in North America, all over the world. We are, we are very successful in Asia, in Australia, in Europe and whatnot. And yes, these projects are being specced three, four years before these towers are being built. So, you know, we can only spec at the time what we have. Right. But here's an interesting part. Um, so with our, these are all major clients. We, we sometimes as well reveal what's in the pipeline. So there are situations where when, when we go through a transition and we know a new generation is being implemented, you know, they all have to sign non-disclosure agreements and whatnot. But, you know, we share with our major clients development. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's overlapping. Sometimes it actually works that that generation is still available by the time that tower is being built. Mm -hmm. um, but here's an interesting point. If that's not the case, the good news is that for the most part, we have standard dimension. Okay. So if we are launching a new generation of dishwashers, it's the same footprint, the same design, the same dimension. Uh, it's just a more technology, technological advanced Mm -hmm. dishwasher with new features and whatnot sometimes also design and same thing here you know on the built-in stuff you know for the most part they fit 
but if it's not the case, we know that obviously, and we make accommodations for that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had projects in my lifetime in Canada and here in the U.S. where, you know, uh, we spec, you know, this range of fridge or oven or, or steam or coffee maker. And then, you know, four years later, when the, the building is going up, uh, they're getting a the newer version, the right. new generation. So that, that's happening. But you're 100% right. Um, you know, technology is, in, is advancing. So it's sometimes difficult to coordinate that, especially when it comes to, to uh, projects right. which have a long lead time. Does it seem like, you know, the, um, what do you call it? The smart home, in quotes, seems to be maybe the next big uh, movement or evolution in the domestic space. Um, maybe it's here, the smart home, or maybe it's not here yet. I'm, I'm never quite certain. <laughs> but um, how has that kind of influenced what you guys do? How has that been integrated into your line? Was that challenging because, you know, smart home relies on software and not just uh, mechanical hardware, you know, physical stuff. There's a software component to it. it, it yeah, you're 100% right. Twofold. First of all, you have, let's call it the hardware component, which in in our in our world is very, very important. Because what's the, the core purpose of a dishwasher? The core purpose of a dishwasher is to wash your dishes <laughs> perfectly clean, okay? The core purpose of your, of your dishwasher is, you know, to wash this wine glass and make it sparkling and not to ruin it. And that's also an interesting story. We actually have a global relationship with Riedel, which is the leading glass manufacturer in the world. And, we're the only dishwasher company who is real glass certified. <laughs> but, so that's, that's kind of a, a core purpose. Mm. Um, washing machines, I mean, it's great if you have you know, the coolest interface, but you know, if your clothes are not being washed properly, then you're missing a big part of the core purpose of this appliance. And the list goes on and on and on. Mm. But back to your question, um, the integrated smart home is absolutely important and part of what we are doing as well. So, you know, we, we, are, we, are, we are focusing on both components, core principle of the appliance, but also technology. And, you know, we have that all, so call it under control. We have the, the media smart home technology. We are working, you know, with all the relevant players from uh, Google to, you know, uh, Alexa connected and so on and so forth. So we are providing all of that. But you know, it's it's it. We are a technology company, but first and foremost, we are an appliance company. And um, you know, there are many components when it comes to our industry. And this is partially my opinion. It's number one, you know, the core purpose of the the product. Then it's the design component. Mm -hmm. uh, a big one is also sustainability. Mm -hmm. And then comes the technology component, which is kind of interrelated with with sustainability as well. But connectivity is I don't know the percentage. Uh, it's a big, it's a big important, but it's not the main percentage of what I would classify uh, important in an appliance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It kind of makes sense in a way because a lot of the the newer technologies, specifically, say, smart, specifically, let's say, the smart home software app, smartphone app kind of realm, um, it's very transient. It's very fast paced. It's very borderline trendy on occasion. And so I, I feel like if, if you buy an appliance, you keep that appliance for 10 plus years, 10 years from now, that whole software interface might be different, but you still want the thing to, your, you know, your investment and in your whatever appliance to last uh, 10 plus years anyway. Yeah. I mean, this is kind of, you know, that platform is all there. And, uh, but yes, um, it's not necessarily, you know, um, Smartphone phones you, you, you buy and you don't keep them usually for 10 years. Yeah. Because the technology is changing so rapidly and the applications and all of that stuff. In appliances, to a degree, it's relevant what you just said. But mm -hmm. again, you, you buy these appliances and I was actually, for the most part, last way more than 10 years. So uh, here again, there's no way for us to, you know, stay relevant on the technology side when it comes to that piece, mm -hmm. but we have a we have a, a solid foundation that we still can operate it, and yeah. you know we have uh, functionality to upgrade and all of these things. So that's all possible. So then, 
that you even after 10 years or 12 years, you can still enjoy um, our, our appliances and still have the opportunity to upgrade them. I don't know if you have an answer to this question, but I was wondering, do you guys have a sense of whether or not the turnover for purchasing new appliances is higher than it was before? If maybe previously people were keeping appliances for a much longer period of time and now maybe they're not, maybe they're buying new things more often? That's a loaded question, by the way. <laughs> um, what, and why? I'll tell you why, yeah. why this is a loaded question. Um, the answer related to our brand is no. Right, okay, right. You know where I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah, because um, your stuff lasts a long time. <laughs> so, so, and then the, the, the next question related to that, I, I, I'm not privileged, even though I know the data. Sure. Um, I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. It's a good answer. It's a good answer. Um, so I, I guess going back to the question of your role, because I think a lot of our listeners are, are, they have their own offices, they have their own companies, and they are interested to hear about how to successfully lead in a way. And, and as are we interested in that question, um, are there any, I don't know, let's say tips or tricks or things that you do as the CEO to, to be a successful leader and to guide things in the direction they should be going? So related specifically to our industry, yeah. um, what, what, what I see um, is when I look at how uh, homes are being designed and built today, uh, when I see how uh, our business partners are operating, when I see how our um, influencers are working you know, with brands such as ours. And I mean, you know, it could be an architect, could be a designer, could be an appliance dealer. Um, I think very important is that you stay relevant, uh, that you continue to um, invest in, 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 in technology. Um, but most importantly still, the interface and the connection to the consumer. Mm. Um, I mean, you know, when you look around here, you know, if this would be, which it is, by the way, uh, a fairly high-end kitchen with high-end appliances, high-end countertop, that's a major investment. So in order to put this together, this is not something you can sort of buy online. Mm -hmm. And so how do we maintain the relevance with a consumer? But there's still a, a, a big portion is still uh, having presence physical presence. And then also, um, it is important that, you know, you have the, um, that you have people who understand what we're doing, uh, that you have people who know how to design this, uh, that we have people, and, and that's a big component, by the way, and, and a huge challenge in our industry, and, and everybody who's listening to this podcast will have to agree, is uh, one of the biggest challenges we are having is to install these appliances. It's um, um, to find good people. So if I look down the road, um, I think that's a big component. So we need the, this industry in particular, we need top designers, we need top architects, we need people you know, who can install kitchens, uh, countertops, appliances, especially when it's built in. I'm talking here fairly high end stuff. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, when I look down the road, um, if somebody wants to design a, a beautiful kitchen or build a beautiful house, um, they need experts. So um, that's an area where we continue to invest in, you know, these beautiful showrooms, in, in the best personnel, have really good relationship with influencers, because otherwise it's, it's not going to look like this. Um, and at the end of the day, a consumer wants kind of perfection and especially if they invest a lot of money into their home so a piece of advice is you know stay relevant make sure that you associate yourself either with good business partners uh, good designers good architects and then eventually with the right friends who have good products sustainable products uh, uh, well designed um, so that's kind of you know what what we are doing always you know, uh, looking uh, a step ahead. 
Mm -hmm. um, making sure that we are associated with the best people possible. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any uh, like partnership with you know like very high end um, like kitchen companies and brands? Like I'm, I'm assuming there is kind of uh, probably a big advantage in having your appliances in their showroom as well as as for you having their kitchen in your showroom to show off your appliances. Is that mm -hmm. something that 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 you guys do? Yes, we do, and. Um, Uh, I mean, we are working closely with all the leading um, kitchen companies. Um, you know, we are trying to be visible in their showrooms. We have uh, affiliations with them uh, because it kind of it's um, um, it's a benefit for both of us. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, you know, their customers are coming into this showroom, and and but they're not their customers; they're our customers. So mm -hmm. you know, being associated with them in their showrooms. Uh, it, it, it is a key strategic um, initiative, and we have been doing this for many, many years. So we work very closely with them, um, you know, be it the domestic uh, manufacturers and or the European or international manufacturers. So that's, that's definitely a, a very important piece of our overall strategy. And, and the use of uh, having showroom around the country is still very relevant for customers to come and see the product in person, right? Like it's not, it's not like probably most of your sales are online. I would assume that people still want to go and, and check out the oven and try out the door and see the accessories for the dishwasher mm -hmm. and all those things, right? A little bit twofold. Um, I mean, online sales is increasing not just here in the US, I, I, I mean appliances. And so if you look at two categories, you, ha you have your typical, what we classify as replacement business. So, you know, your dishwasher is broken, you need a new dishwasher. Right. Your washing machine is broken, you need a new washing machine. Can that sale be done online? Yes, it can. But the minute you enter into either a kitchen renovation or you're building a new house, or then, you know, these showrooms, which is a big investment, mm. uh, is still very relevant because you're 100% right. People still want to come in here. They want to touch. They want to feel. But they also want to taste. They want to smell. Uh, they want to see how this works because, you know, uh, a new kitchen it is a big investment. So, you know, and it's not something you do every two years. Right. Um, you know, ultimately, if you, for example, lease a car, you know, after the, Every three years, you're going to just hand the key back and lease another one. Yeah. Okay? But if you build a, a new house or you renovate your kitchen, you spend, I don't know, forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000, you know, you want this to last for 10, 15 years. So people do their research and they really, they really want to know what, you know, these appliances can do. They want to look, they want to look and feel, they want to open, you know, the drawers, they want to check out the countertops, you know, like all the things you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Um, it's very relevant. So, um, you know, there's this big discussion about, you know, uh, brick and mortar. Uh, I don't call this brick and mortar. This is a very specialized showroom for, you know, appliances and, and it's a, it's a different environment. So I still believe that this will remain very important. Uh, I mean, we are doing cooking classes here, all of these things that that will, that will not go away. So, you know, looking down the road, I think that's very essential that brands like ours uh, offer a service like that. Yeah, no, I, th I think showroom is, 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 is definitely something even for designers to be able to go and, and look at things is, is much, uh, much more helpful. I was wondering, so you, you mentioned some cooking classes and things. Is it possible for architects, designers, or even individuals who want to buy appliances to go and taste something that was cooked in one of your convection oven <laughs> or see how the dishwasher is working? Okay. I haven't prepared this for this. <laughs> purpose today um, <laughs> cooking. Not, but, uh, this is the start of your new cooking show <laughs> <laughs> no uh, you have to call somebody else in. i mean I, i'm versatile with some stuff you know um i'm, I'm a master in uh, in uh, in rip oh uh, i actually make i make i make that in our steamer oh really uh, unbelievable <laughs> so you know we steam them for two hours then we take them out barbecue sauce and then it goes on maximum broil for wow. 10 minutes and it tastes fantastic so that i can <laughs> do awesome. um very well uh, i'm also an expert in operating our coffee machine but, <laughs> um 
the real stuff I leave to our chefs in our showrooms. But back to your question, yes, you know, we have uh, events with designers. Uh, we also do a lot of stuff with our business partners. So we have a, um, a large uh, group of specialty dealers here in the U.S., and they also use their showrooms. Uh, but our showroom, yes, you can come in here as a consumer. You can book it online. You can just come off the street and, and, and you know, uh, taste a, a coffee. But we have special uh, cooking classes throughout uh, all of our showrooms in the U.S. Uh, and actually worldwide. So that's, that's something we do. Um, and it's still relevant. And people really like it. And it's not just for new consumers. It's also we have a lot of existing clients. They book those classes and just you know come here to find out new recipes and it's very very important and very successful you had mentioned that there has been kind of an uptick in the uh, online um, sales to area um, I was wondering is that in part because of COVID did you guys see like a spike in certain types of sales because of COVID yes and um, and it's not just us it's I think many industries have yeah. uh, seen that uh, uptake um, I believe some of it will come back, uh, some of it, some of it won't. And what all, what it also did, um, a lot of our, uh, dealers and, and business partners, you know, they upgraded their logistics, mm -hmm. their online ordering, uh, their content on their website. We did the same thing. And, uh, many companies, most companies have done that. Um, and there was a huge uptake by the way. And again, this will, some of it will, will remain in the e-commerce space, so to speak, but uh, some of it will come back to, you know, let's call it the conventional brick and mortar. Um, how much? Time will tell. Mm -hmm. uh, people definitely got used to the fact that, you know, you can't go out, but you still have to buy. And whether it's appliances, um, we, we saw a lot of, a big uptake, for example, on consumables. Mm -hmm. um, but also because people spend more time at home. Uh, but going forward, um, the e-commerce component will continue to grow. Uh, but again, you know what I mentioned before, you know, when you design a new kitchen, um, you need um, a designer who knows what, what they're doing. You have to have the right specifier. You know, you can't make mistakes here. You know, you need mm -hmm. the top countertop people you have to have a, a great uh, a kitchen designer, a good kitchen company. This is not something you, it's going to be very difficult to buy this online. Yeah. But other stuff, no question about it. There is the possibility uh, that you can do this online. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's interesting for us because there does seem to be a, a perception on the consumer and client side, which is understandable that, uh, yeah, we can just do everything online. It's it's easy. I just click it, it goes in my cart, and then it shows up in two days because mm -hmm. Amazon has set this two-day pace now. And um, you're, I think you're right that in the in the space of you know creating a kitchen in terms of the appliances and the specking and the architecture and interior design, it's it it quickly becomes a lot more complicated than I think the average person imagines it, it would be. Good luck doing this yourself. Yeah. Uh, so. Back to one of the questions, you know, we talked about before is, you know, especially in, in this space we are in, um, uh, experts are still required to do what you see here. And uh, this is not something click, click, click. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a development, you know, that you can do kind of some pre-designing and, and, you know, design your dream kitchen online and, you know, uh, play around with colors and different designs. but <laughs> You know, this is more or less just an uh, uh, um, an optical op uh, option. Uh -huh. But you know, when it really comes to you know touch and feel and smell and try and then really design this and put this together, um, this is where we we come in and and, and our business partners um, and you know designers who help us uh, and 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 the customer to design. Uh, a kitchen, a bathroom, a house, and all of these things. I think this is still very, very relevant. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned earlier. Especially, uh, yeah. Go ahead. no, I mean, again, you know, um, I mean, we are a premium brand. Yeah. Um, and, you know, this is a different space. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you talk about, you know, a 30-inch sliding range for $599, <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's a different category. Yeah. Um, 
but you know what we're talking here is uh, top-notch design. It's a different world altogether, and this is only possible if you have the right team together. And that mm. starts with you know a company like ours who have facilities like this, and then again uh, uh, a designer, and then you know business partners like uh, you know our dealers uh, who uh, who help us to put something like this together. Do you enjoy your job? I, I, I get the impression that you really love what you do. <laughs> For the most part. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are days where, you know, it, it, it's challenging. Uh, but for the most part, I, I truly enjoy what I'm doing. Do you do you dream about flying dishwashers and things <laughs> like that? Flying toasters. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet? Okay, good, good. Uh, Um, I was wondering, yeah, you know, at the beginning of our conversation, we mentioned like the differences between the European market versus the American market. Mm. And that was like when you guys started the American market, you noticed that. I was wondering um, if you feel like those differences are still very, very much strong between the markets or if things kind of start to blend over each other and, and um, you know, get influenced by other countries, because I feel like we can see that through within our profession, through design architecture and people stays across the world kind of becoming, you know, pretty merged, much yeah. merged. Um, have you noticed that at all? If I compare the North American market 20, 10 years ago to where we are today, um, I agree with you. The, the, the markets have come much closer together. Um, they're still, especially on the contemporary side of our industry. Mm -hmm. um, 20 years ago, I would say uh, North America was a very traditional market and, hmm. and a very domesticated market. And I don't mean it in a bad way. Um, and then you know, a lot of influences came into North America, predominantly from Europe. Um, and if I just look at the design side of the business, um, a big movement towards more slick design, more integration, uh, flush uh, built-in appliances. That wasn't the case 10, 15 years ago. Hmm. Okay? I mean, we were like totally out there and now we are the norm and not just our brand, other brands as well. So there is a um, big movement towards, let's call it a, a more European contemporary modern design mm -hmm. and we see it more and more which by the way is very beneficial for us because right. we are leading it we are leading edge when it comes to that so that helped us a lot but we still have you know our traditional ranges <laughs> we need to have that because there is still a um that many consumers they want that and it yeah. depends on the region and 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 also you know uh where where their homes are uh an, a, a chalet in in, in vale <laughs> okay, it's different than a, um, a penthouse in in New York, yeah. right? Yeah, um, yeah. So, um, and that's where the U.S. is interesting, um, and we call it it's a very diversified market when mm. it comes to consumer needs, and it's not just our appliances. Then you know that house in Vail, you know, has a different kitchen uh, than the penthouse in Manhattan yeah. or in San Francisco or wherever, um, and You know, we probably don't have that to that extent in Europe. Uh, but the good news is we are offering both. But if I look at the shift, there's definitely a shift to a more modern design than it was 10 years ago. And not just in our space, it's kitchen, it's, it's bathrooms, it's homes. Mm -hmm. I mean, just look at, you know, when you see, you know, what happened uh, in, in home design uh, the last 10 years, it's, 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 a very big shift to more modern design, uh, which personally I like a lot. Um, but you're 100% right. The, the market, they're not as, as different as they were 20 years ago. Gotcha. Um, I was wondering how large is your, let's call it like research and design, your R&D department? Um, like, I don't know if you can tell us, but I'm, I'm just curious, like what percentage of, of the personnel is allocated to, you know, that effort? I don't know. I, I don't even know the exact numbers, like per, the perfect percentage, but it's, it's, it's significant. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I look at, um, especially station in Europe, I mean, we have also a designated product development group here in the US, um, but uh, which help us, you know, do the research and work with the factories and whatnot. But, you know, if I look at um, um, our teams in, in, in Europe, I mean, we're talking here about a couple thousand people at least. 
And then you had also mentioned previously that, you know, being with the company for, what is it, 20, 20 years or just over 20 years, that um, you've seen a big shift in 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 the appliance space so for the technology, for the design, for everything. And it and actually, when you think about back to like the 90s, it, it is remarkable, the, the changes in the appliances. Um, do you have a sense of what that means for the future? Or is that even hard to speculate? Because I, I think like 20 years ago, if, if you if you were to tell someone like this is the future of, you know, dishwashers and ovens and whatnot, they, they probably wouldn't even understand what you were talking about. Well, they would, but they would think that you're talking about a science fiction novel more than anything else. Um, the biggest change I foresee in the U.S. is a bigger movement towards sustainability and um, um the environment mm -hmm. and um this is definitely something which will happen so when i look back or when i compare for example the, the requirements europe especially some of the countries where you know our appliances our mo most manufacturers are you know uh, providing that but we have for example the highest energy star ratings in the industry and uh, you know why is that so important but well, you know, it, it's very important. It's, it's energy consumption, it's water consumption, and obviously the more efficient your appliances are, arguably that's better for the environment. And yep. so I see, we see it already now, there is a movement towards, you know, uh, being more um, mindful of the environment and uh, a big consumer of, energy and, and it's not just uh, power or water it's just in general it's also you mentioned that before uh, sustainability a big piece is how long are these appliances are lasting mm. you know if, if you replace them every two years where do they go so it's a component of you know call it energy consumption water consumption but also how long do they last right so there i see there's still a big evolution to come in north america um so in terms of technology and whatnot, you're 100% right. I mean, I could go through the advancement in terms of feature content and whatnot. I mean, a dishwasher today versus a dishwasher 20 years ago, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, I'd still wash the dishes. But I mean, what 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 development and innovation went in there is mind-boggling. Okay, it's fantastic. But you could you would argue, well, this is not a big thing for us as the experts mm -hmm. in that space. It was a big evolution. But again, back to your initial question, what else is to come? I think a big one is um, protecting the environment. And appliance manufacturers can play a major vital role in doing so. Uh, and I also believe that consumers will move more and more towards that. And um, for example, energy star ratings will become way more relevant in the US than they are today, mm. uh, which by the way is good for us. But um, this, this is where I see a big movement towards that yeah. in the next few years. Yeah. And I, I like the point you brought up of, of it's not just how much energy the appliance is consuming when in use, energy and water, but it's also how long it lasts, which reminded me mm -hmm. of, you know, I'm sure you've heard of this concept of, uh, what is it? Um, it's a bit of a myth in a way, but it, it's uh, oh, designed obsolescence. There's always a suspicion amongst consumers that you know big companies are designing things to burn out to church so that they're therefore they can sell new things. Um, uh, it's a misconception when it comes to our company. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people think of that about Mila, but it, it's it's an interesting um, idea. <laughs> Do you, do you have any idea which appliances, like let's say your your best seller? Mm. I have an idea, but I'm not going to share that. <laughs> so you know we're I asking the right my, I, I <laughs> oh, which ones? You what, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I can tell you which which is my favorite appliance. Yeah, that's um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But by a long shot, our coffee maker. <laughs> <laughs> really? Because a, I use it. I use it to. Uh, I use it uh, a lot, but it's just uh, a phenomenal product. All of our products are, I would say, very very good and uh, but that's the one i use the most and i love the most uh, coffee maker that's my favorite product is it more for like a an espresso type of coffee or an american Everything type of coffee want. okay <laughs> uh, you can do an americano you can do an espresso you can do a latte you can do anything you want oh. 
right? You can, you know, you can do a, a bean coffee, a grounded coffee. You can do um, uh, anything you want. It's it's pretty remarkable. Well, we'll have to stop by your San Francisco showroom and try it out. <laughs> <laughs> Any anytime, anytime, just uh, stop by, and you know, my colleagues will serve you the perfect uh, cup of coffee. Sounds great. <laughs> Uh, but so what are like some of the challenges for you specifically in the role that you have? A, a big one, and I think I'm, I mentioned that before, is um, finding um, finding key help, so to speak. Right. Mm -hmm. um, we, have, we have some areas, and in, in our industry is um, in a transition here as well, you know, finding uh, good installers, for example, finding good uh, technicians. Um, that's, that's a challenge for us, um, because, um, that, that industry per se is, you know, not growing and we have a lot of initiatives going, uh, also on the NKBA side where, you know, we're working with colleges and, 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 um, um, and, and having a, a, a lot of initiatives, uh, to bring on young people and get them into the, into these professions. And it's actually a profession, believe it or not. I mean. Um, uh, appliance installers doesn't sound like an exciting uh, a job opportunity, but I tell you, there's a lot of work out there, and it's well paid. And you know, if, if, if you can do a, a good job there, you can make a great living. Um, service technicians, the same thing. Uh, so that's one area where you know I'm spending a lot of time as well developing um, these areas. Um, and then you know, just the, the regular stuff, you know day to day, but that's, that's an area where we have to really pay attention um, because hmm. our customers, they're expecting, and again, I'm not talking out of context, right? They always say, but your premium brand, you know, why can't you fix this? You know, you have to have somebody here this, here this afternoon. I mean, I could share with you how difficult it is to find people right now, hmm. uh, qualified people to do, in this case, a very important job. So, you know, and our customers don't want to hear that. So that's, that's one area where we have to pay a lot of attention, not just our company in general, our industry, mm -hmm. because, you know, if we, if we cannot find a solution for that problem, then this is going to hurt us. Um, and, you know, maybe just um, related to that, uh, again, coming back to, you know, installing these beautiful appliances, not so easy to do that, you know, and then you're putting these appliances in beautiful cabinets. And then you know you 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 work around you know unbelievable you know countertops from the likes of Cambria, and you know this is this is really good stuff, and you know you don't want to damage that during an installation, so um, you need qualified people. Uh, we pay them well, but you know to find them is is not so easy. So these are the things you know they are they're challenges which people don't realize. Mm. You know, um, but they are they're very very complex issues for us. And actually, I'll be honest, I would have that would have never occurred to me that that would be a big portion of of what you guys do or, or a concern or a challenge to find people who are qualified to install. But so, <laughs> is, is the installation is complicated mainly because uh, the installer has to be able to work around in conditions that you know, where they're not damaging things? It, it's not complicated per se, uh -huh. but you know, you have to have diligent people, they have to be well-trained and, and just, uh, you know, to find people like that, uh, train them and, and keep them in that job, uh, that's an issue. Mm -hmm. um, and um, there are, you know, a lot of qualified people out there, but then also there are succession issues, people are retiring and there are not enough people coming up uh, the ladder, so to speak, huh. in order to fill these openings. Are, are these people, because uh, I don't know how it works, are they employed by Mila or is this, are you you're talking about third party or, or out, outside companies that provide these services? Combination of, combination okay. of. For example, we have our own um, group of Mila factory trained technicians. They work for us, but then we also work with Mila service partners. They're third party uh, appliance repair companies, which we, you know, train and support. And then on the install side, uh, these are either independent companies and or um, our dealers employ their own installers. So it's a combination. But again, it, it, believe it or not, it's a, especially the install side of our business and the people who are on that call who live with that, 
mm-hmm. every single day. Uh, it's a related industry, um, and and you know, very again, very complex. And those are things you know, um, a consumer sometimes doesn't understand. You know, what is going on behind the scenes, right? right. Uh, and that's one area where um, this is giving us you know, at times, big headaches. Uh, and then at the end of the day, if something goes wrong, guess who they call? They call our dealer, they call us. Mm-hmm. And um, um, that, that's, that's, that's a piece, you know, you know we, we, <laughs> where we talk about innovations and, and, and technology and, you know, hooking our appliances up to Google and Alexa. That's all the, the cool stuff, so to speak. Okay? And, and, you know, going to trade shows and developing new products. But what what about you know that insulation which just went wrong, okay? Mm-hmm. Because or you know uh, an installer accidentally drilled a hole in into a twenty five thousand dollar countertop, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but it happened. Yeah. Oh, okay. My and then yeah. Or the home builder, you know, the custom home builder now who wants to sell the house, but you know the kitchen is not properly installed, mm-hmm. and and they can't take possession of the house. So, you know, this is the day-to-day stuff, which is not the exciting piece of my job, but, mm-hmm. you know, you have to pay attention to that. And um, again, uh, which is, you know, kind of, let's call it n- not even the extra mile, it's like the extra inch. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and those are the things where, you know, you can have the best designers uh, on a job, you can have the best architect, um, but this stuff, it, it, those are the real headaches. <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting. Actually, now that you describe it, 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 it's pretty clear. You paint a very clear picture because, you know, thinking about it translated to more of what we do, you're right. It's always that last bit that is that makes the big difference because it's the it's the it's the final stretch where whatever Mm -hmm. the work is done is what's going to be seen or felt or problems are going to be caused. And I mean, I mean, while we're at this topic, it's actually, you know, it's beautiful to come into this beautiful showroom, right? You take your your client here, you sit here, you know, you have a cappuccino, we, we cook you some <laughs> cool meals and you eat, have a glass of wine, you know, you design your, your dream kitchen, you pick your appliances, you know, you write the order and you're the happiest person on earth, okay? But now, you know, the kitchen has to be designed, has to be manufactured, has to be, you know, kind of delivered, has to be installed. That, that stuff is, you know, kind of, um, uh, the, the 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 final the final execution of you know a project like this is that's that's what matters. Yeah. That's what matters, and uh, that's where you know again the the experts come in. Then you need quality um, uh, people on the job. It starts with a with a great designer, architect, a business partner. In our case, our dealers. Mm-hmm. Then you know. Our side of this, logistics, warehousing, shipping the right product, specifying the right product, a lot of stuff goes into it. And then the planning. So, you know, it's always nice to talk about the, the really uh, exciting piece of our job, but this is equally important. Yeah. Yeah. Equally important and, not, and sometimes not the, not very glamorous <laughs> compared really. to the, the sketching and the dreaming and, and whatnot <laughs> that you described. No, absolutely. Is is it? Um, <clears throat> and then there's the, the question of like, you know, once it's done, uh, we're talking about items that are going to be used over a period of time and there might be some troubles along the way. Um, so getting a hold of a technician and troubleshooting, is it is that even like more complicated now because... Um, the appliances are so much more sophisticated than before? Uh, yes and no. Actually, in, hmm. in most cases, it, it helps us that we have more technology in the appliance. Hmm. Um, you know, we, we, can, we have diagnostic features where we can actually um, um, diagnose before we even go out there and find out what's wrong with the appliance. So a big piece is what we always try to do is what we call call avoid. So sometimes, you know, it, it's just, maybe um, a little thing which the customer actually can fix themselves. Mm-hmm. So we, we are spending a lot of effort and time not to send out a technician, mm-hmm. but the appliance gives us feedback, so to speak. So that's, that's the positive side of it. Um, but, um, you know, at, at times something breaks and we need a part and we have to go there. I think a, 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 the biggest challenge is to manage expectations. 
And now I'm coming back to what I initially said about finding, you know, quality people and, and because our consumers are very demanding. Sometimes, you know, you know, they don't want to wait a day or two or three days for a service call. Right. But, you know, sometimes there are obstacles. So managing the expectation, you know, it's not always just because you're a premium brand, you know, you, you have uh, somebody waiting across the street from your house to come in to fix your appliance. Mm-hmm. So um, that's sometimes a challenge, I would say, um, not just for us, I think, in general. Yeah. Um, but, you know, more technology in an appliance, uh, I think that's beneficial. Hmm. So, you know, I mean, I can just speak for myself. You know, it, 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 if I have a competent person on the other line, when I you know, either call or, you know, a lot of stuff now is chat functions. Mm-hmm. Um, we also have a, a lot of technology in, you know, uh, a digital asset, for example, you know, uh, YouTube videos mm-hmm. uh, or videos in general, where we, it, it's, it's, it's education on the appliance, but it also, you know, how to fix certain things. And a lot of people do that, you know, like, how can I fix that? Okay. And, you know, they don't even want to call us, you know, they spend five, 10 minutes to see if they can find it. And then they, they do it themselves, you know, and just, okay, well, this is all it is, little adjustment. Oh, now it works. Perfect. I don't have to call anybody. Um, but again, that's where technology helps, you know, the interface and whatnot. So I think that's where technology is very beneficial. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering how much testing do you, how much and what kind of testing do your appliances <laughs> go through? Like, do you throw them off from the 15th floor of a building and see what happens? <laughs> you know, do you like, like, like what, do, what do you do for, for testing them? So first of all, I, you know, if we would have time, I, I could show you some really cool videos uh, from our testing facility. But, you know, all of our appliances are tested for 20 year life uh, per, uh, performance, wow. or 20, uh, 20, 20 year Uh, lifespan. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we have testing facilities in our factories. I've seen them many times, you know, where, for example, on a vacuum cleaner, we, we test the court, you know, uh, a reveal. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's a machine, you know, which pulls that cord <laughs> like literally thousands of times, okay, to make sure that it doesn't break. And, you know, we do the same thing, you know, on opening the doors and whatnot. So uh, to answer your question, we do a lot of testing <laughs> i would love to see those videos yeah well we can do we can we can get the the links from you guys and put yeah. them in the, the notes and people can sure. watch them that no way. Problem. Yeah. yeah 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 um and, and during all of this kind of like testing research development process do you have an idea of like how many or 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 how, yeah how many uh, appliances never come to the market Like how many things you guys experiment and develop and actually never make it to the finish line? You don't have to give me a number. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, close to that. Wow. Really? Um, yeah. yeah. So again, you know, we, 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 we keep to our core. Right. And, um, and usually when we develop something, it goes to market. Wow. That's pretty impressive. On the subject of branding, um, I, I've always thought found that that kind of the concept of branding is, is pretty interesting because you're developing an identity for a company, and a lot of times a, a, a brand feels like a almost like it doesn't exist until you manufacture it in, in a sense. But you know, Mila has this wonderful phrase of "Ima Bessa forever better." Which is fascinating because actually, and thinking about that, that phrase could apply to virtually anything that you guys do. It could apply to the design of things, the engineering, the performance, or even how you manufacture stuff. Um, so I, I guess I'm kind of talking out, thinking out loud here. But are there other things you guys do to to further solidify the company culture and brand beyond producing, you know, quality products? I mean, it, most of it actually re, re, revolves around the product. Yeah. And again, you mentioned the, the phrase Ima Bessa, but it's, you know, I think that's the core, you know, there are many elements, you know, which we use in our branding in our advertising, but it all comes back to, to the, to the core principle of the company. And it always starts with this, you know, very basic, but uh, powerful slogan, Ima Bessa, forever better. And um, that's how we, you know, design our appliances, that's how we produce them, manufacture them, test them, 
showcase them. It, it's all around that that principle. So, and then you know, obviously, when we do you know major uh, product launches and whatnot, we do it more specific. But it's 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 about the core principles: quality, sustainability, innovation, design, and that's how you know we we have built the brand and uh, and the brand awareness around it. Would you say that it's primarily the, the quality of the product that differentiates you guys from other companies? It's a big one, mm. um, but you know, over the years, it's you know, it's, it's the quality it features. Again, I mentioned that I, I repeat myself: innovation is big. Uh, a major component is sustainability mm. and, and, and 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 the environment. Uh, and in my opinion, in our opinion, this is becoming a, a bigger and more important. Uh, attribute of, of our brand, but um, appliances in general. I was wondering too, you know, like we were talking about trends uh, such as sustainability, smart homes, but there is also, I feel, I feel like there there is also the trend of wanting to customize mm -hmm. things, appliances, or like, you know, your phone, or like, you know, like in general, I feel like maybe our generation is more into like customizability. Do you guys offer some of those things where maybe you have some options on some appliances or different finishes, uh, things like that? Um, yes and no. Um, there is customizability um, mainly uh, on the on the color side. Mm -hmm. So you know we're offering different colors, sometimes different layouts. But for the most part, that you know, like we can change now the uh, the display and put it below here. That's not possible. Right. Right. Um, so there's there are certain you know core design principles and uh, which we can change, but you know in terms of customizing, I mean we have different handles you know depending on the appliance. But in general, our product range is so diversified and actually so big, um, also compared to other brands that we are offering actually probably one of the most diversified uh, product range and also the most choices so mm -hmm. i think we're in a, in, a, in a good position but in terms of customization um um it's to a degree limited right, depending right. on you know if you compare us now i don't know with some of the electronic guys or whatnot um that's that's not necessarily where where we uh feel you have to be um, um you know you have to have a, a product range which can be uh, uh, custom that makes right. sense. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I guess also thinking about, <clears throat> like, there's like I suppose there's two ways to approach a product. One, <laughs> this is actually an analogy back to computers, like Apple versus uh, Microsoft. But and and one kind of strategy would be to <clears throat> offer users like maximum ability to manipulate and change whatever they want. Let's say, and another route is to say, well, we're the experts and we know how to create the best version of this of this type, of this model, of this whatever, and we're going to do that, and that's what we're going to do. And we'll allow you to, to change the color and whatnot, obviously, but um, the core engineering of it is set because presumably you guys know what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, the only the, the only point, and maybe I you know I have to kind of rephrase that a little bit. Sure. And, and, and revise my statement to a degree. So, you know, I'm just, what you just mentioned. So when we look at... Um, let's say, a, um, a cooking appliance. In within our programs, we also have favorites. So we can custom design certain menus mm -hmm. and certain recipes. Uh, so, you know, if you have your, your favorite pizza and, you know, you, 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 you make it a certain way, you can store that particular pizza um, and have a, have a favorite button in there. So there's customization. Sure. And you kind of, you know, can set up your appliance to do certain things the way you like it. Or <laughs> I mentioned, you know, my favorite my favorite um, appliance, which is our coffee maker. So, so you know, you, you can also modify, you know, the strength and and the length of your espresso, and wow. then you can store it. So there is, you know, you could call this customization yeah. as well. So you know, it's not just a box, and then you know, you know, you press the button, that's it. You can actually program the appliance to do certain things to your taste and to your to your liking. So that's that's possible, but you know, if you want the coffee maker to be whatever five inches longer, <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> Why not? Why can't you do that? 
I, I, mean, and I want it. Yeah. <laughs> and I want it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, no, that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I remember actually going to uh, to your showroom in New York City when we were working there, and uh, we were having a tour of the showroom and the appliances, and we were presented with uh, one of your dishwasher, and I was blown by it. I was like, wow, there's so many possibilities for me to like put the dishes inside, you know, like. I was like, this is the most thoughtful dishwasher I've ever yeah. seen, mm -hmm. right? From the user point of view. Um, so I, I wish I would have just been able to stay there and kind of play around with it. Because <laughs> I thought I thought that was that was really cool, but at the same time, it's kind of like what would you would expect an appliance to provide you if you right. have a bunch of different types of dishes and you just want it to fit a certain mm -hmm. way, right? right. Yeah, I think they. Oh, you can just you, you can design the baskets and you know yeah, yeah. accommodate certain heights and whatnot and adjust it and move it. So you know that's possible as well. So in a way, that's customization as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. it's flexibility. I call it. Yeah, yeah. Back to the smart home question, um, because that does, again, we've been talking about it requires a software component. Mm. So when you guys first entered that space, did you end up producing? Did you end up like partnering with like a software, you know, app company, a, a smart home wireless, whatever company to fill that portion of the product experience? We do everything in house, mm. but we cooperate with major players. So, but uh, no, this is all in house development. Really? Wow. Again, I mean, we are using, you know, um, corporation, but uh, we have our own smart home division. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever you see is developed by me. Wow, that's really cool. Well, I guess the final question, and we might have already sort of covered it, but it's a good final question to ask, is um, what is the future of Mila? What is the future of the company? Well, uh, if I would uh, uh, kind of um, um, ask our shareholders, um, <laughs> they would answer that question, you know, remain uh, independent, uh, remain strong, remain family owned, uh, and have another 122 successful years. <laughs> um, I think it's remarkable um, and, and very unique, not just in our industry to have a company uh, of that size um, being the industry leader uh, in, in, a, in a very competitive industry. So the future is we want to stay relevant. Um, again, our our, our main goals are uh, sustainability, innovation, uh, stay uh, independent and continue to grow the business and uh, produce quality appliances for our customers. And, and the last thing, actually, by extension of, of what you just said, so having the company being family owned and having, which is amazing, like fourth generation, um, is that is that a significant, um, you know, a benefit for for being successful with the company producing quality products and all these kinds of things? Um, I can tell you from my own experience, you know, being, you know, the CEO of, um, of Mealy USA and before uh, of Mealy Canada and having worked for this company for 22 years, it's a major advantage. Mm. Um, you know, we are just, you know, that the word independent is actually the key here. Um, and uh, that helps us, you know, to make the right decisions. Uh, uh, the company, uh, the, the family has been um, uh, extremely supportive. They wanna, they wanna grow in a, in a, in a, in a proper fashion. Uh, they give us um, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, uh, help and support, and and that is uh, something which is ultimately. Uh, a big piece of our success, and we will continue to, you know, uh, be successful in 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 our industry. And um, being an independent company is one of, um, in my opinion, one of the key successful uh, success factors uh, for our for our company. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and and sharing your story, and then hearing more about Mila and everything else. I I really enjoyed this. Yeah, no, me too. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, everybody, for listening to this week's episode. If you like this show and what we're doing, then please support us by leaving a review in the Apple Podcast app. I know a lot of you are on Spotify and whatever. If you happen to have an Apple account, just log in, 
leave a review that actually supports us and helps us a lot. Um, you can also find us, though, uh, well, first of all, on our website, which is secondstudiopod.com, and we are on all of the social medias. Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We also have a hotline. You can leave a message or send a text. Number is 213-222-6950. A few of you have already reached out, so we really appreciate that. Um, we have an email address if you want to shoot us an email instead. The address is hello at secondstudiopod.com. You can send us any guest requests, uh, any feedbacks about episodes, questions, tips you want to share with people. Mm -hmm. If you want to, you know... Um, I don't know. Send us your best recipe. You can also do that. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of recipes, uh, I feel like Jan could have his own cooking show. <laughs> and thanks to him for joining. Actually, it was it was a pleasure and and really um, something special to have him on the show. He had pretty interesting stories, and even though it's not architecture, it's it's very very fascinating the kind of problems that they have to solve for what they do, mm -hmm. and then how it fits within our you know our space. Yep. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. We did. And uh, we look forward to speaking with you next week or sooner. Or sooner. Oh, <laughs> <Okay>. my sooner. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.